I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall discuss about the role of a condenser in a steam power plant. If we recall then we can understand there are a few major components in a steam power plant and we have discussed about all those components like boiler, turbine, condenser and a pump, feed water pump. We have discussed about the boiler because boilers are essential and this particular component is there in a steam power plant to produce or to generate steam. And steam which is produced in the boiler is taken to the turbine and while steam is flowing or steam flows through the turbine, it does work on the rotating part of the turbine and we get work output. After doing some work, that steam is again, again taken to another device that is the condenser, where steam releases heat and again after releasing heat, steam you know is condensed into water and that water is recycled back to the boiler. So, now today we shall discuss about the you know two important objectives or roles of the condenser in a steam power plant and to understand that let us again draw this specific or schematic diagram of the steam power plant and we shall try to map the processes in a TS plane. So, if we try to draw the uh, steam power plant schematically, then we will see that condenser plays an important role. So, this is turbine, we get work output from this, this is the feed water pump, we need to supply some energy to the pump and on receiving upon receiving heat that feed water which is supplied by this pump to the boiler gets converted into steam and that steam is taken into the turbine not directly into the turbine. We have discussed that steam is taken to the turbine via flow nozzles. The sole purpose of the nozzle is to produce steam jets and when steam jets impinge upon the turbine blades which are mounted on the you know shaft of a turbine that turbine wheel rotates and we are getting work output. Now, this particular place that is the condenser wherein steam or exit steam of the turbine is taken that steam releases heat and gets converted into water and that water is taken or pumped back to the boiler. So, now if we try to draw all these processes in this T s plane, we can see that if we consider that this particular unit is you know operating following Rankine cycle with superheated steam. 
So, that steam is superheated beyond this point and now we can see all these processes that is 1 to 2, this is 3, this is 4. Now, I would like to discuss first one important objective of having this particular unit in a steam power plant. What you can understand from this particular schematic is that if we do not consider this particular unit, if we consider a hypothetical case. So, feed water would be pumped by this feed water pump to the boiler upon receiving heat from an external source that water will be converted into steam, that steam will be taken into the turbine and the turbine will produce work. Now, after doing work, if we do not consider that that steam will be again taken to the condenser, instead that steam will be discharged into the ambient, uh, you know uh, any place. Then what we can do? We can understand that you know if we would like to discharge the steam into the ambient ambience, then the steam will be discharged at the atmospheric pressure and you know that steam will release it when it is discharged to the you know ambience, then the saturation temperature corresponding to atmospheric pressure is 100 degree Celsius. So, what you can understand that when steam will be discharged into the ambience at the atmospheric pressure, the steam temperature will be 100 degree Celsius and that at that temperature steam will be converted into water. Now, question is that particular you know process is not allowed because of this environmental constraint, because we cannot really discharge steam water mixture which is having 100 degree Celsius temperature to the ambience. Second thing you know that if it is a case then again we have to supply feed water for each time and that is also not an economical design of the power plant. So, essentially we need to have this cyclic processes such that steam that comes out from the turbine will be taken into this condenser. Upon releasing heat that steam will be condensed into water, that water of course, saturated water and that water will be taken back to the boiler. So, this is how this particular steam power plant works. Now, we can understand that means, condenser plays a you know major role to convert steam into the water, so that we can operate this particular unit in a cyclic manner. So, this is one of the most important objectives. You also can understand that if we now recall the second law of thermodynamics. Kelvin Planck statement says that it is not possible to construct a device that will operate in a cycle while that will operate in a cycle and produce network while exchanging heat with a single temperature thermal reservoir. So, now let us again look at this particular uh, schematic diagram. So, if we consider that this is only the heat you know uh, thermal reservoir boiler wherein heat is applied, we may get network because W net equal to W out minus W in. So, even if we try to get network output, but second law of thermodynamics puts a restriction that there must be a place where heat should be rejected if you would like to operate the unit in a cyclic manner. So, this particular place or unit should be there. So, condenser will be there if we need to run this system in a cyclic manner. So, this particular component 
acts like a heat sink and steam rejects heat in this particular uh, component. So, this is one of the important objectives. Now, if we look at another one that is the most fundamental you know objective of having condenser in a steam power plant. So, if we look at this T s plane, what we can understand? So, if we try to what is this W work? This is W out. I am writing here specific work output W. So, this is specific work output and this is H 3 minus H 4 that we can see from this T s plane. So, that is the enthalpy drop of steam inside the turbine and that is the specific work output. As I said you that this pump will handle only liquid. Now, if the liquid is having high temperature then again there will be some problematic issues to handle that you know uh, liquid or hot liquid by this pump, because pump blades uh, will be the blade material will be you know having certain permissible uh, stress or thermal stress uh, load thermal stress bearing capacity. So, if the temperature of the working fluid is higher than the temperature which is allowed when uh, this particular blade is selected I mean that the blade can withstand then if we now use this pump to handle that particular liquid which is having high temperature blade material may fail. So, our objective should be to reduce the temperature of water which is you know available at the exit of the condenser. Now, if you would like to reduce the temperature of the water then enthalpy H force should be less and this is all this is also good this is also a good you know uh, thing because higher the enthalpy drop of steam inside the turbine more will be the specific work output. Now, consider this is this T s diagram what we can understand that you know this pressure which is the condenser pressure which is also known as turbine back pressure the pressure at the exit of the turbine. Now, if this condenser pressure is atmospheric pressure say for example, then the liquid saturated liquid at point 1 that would be available at the inlet of the pump so, will be having temperature 100 degree Celsius temperature. So, basically we can understand that if we do not have this particular unit condenser and by any means if we try to condense the steam at the atmospheric pressure or atmospheric condition then temperature of the liquid or saturated liquid that would be available at the inlet of the pump will be having high temperature. So, that temperature will I mean the liquid with that high temperature will be or will create a few problematic issues to run the pump you know in a long run. Second thing I mean if we still use any device wherein steam will be condensed in into the liquid at the atmospheric pressure, then you can understand that temperature or enthalpy at state point 4 will be relatively high and that if that enthalpy is high then this enthalpy drop will be reduced and specific work output will be reduced. So, the ideal situation should be that the liquid temperature which is 
the temperature of the liquid at the inlet of the pump should be in the range of 25 to 30 degree Celsius. It may also be 20 degree Celsius. Now, if we consider that the liquid temperature that means the temperature of the liquid at the inlet of the pump should be 25 or 30 degree Celsius temperature and at 25 or 30 degree Celsius temperature saturation pressure is way less than the atmospheric pressure. And so, this is when P atmospheric we know that is 100, 100 uh, kilo Pascal. I mean close to 100 kilo Pascal. So, if we now reduce, so basically 101.3 kilo Pascal or 100 close to 100 kilo Pascal. So, now, so I can write like this. So, at that pressure temperature of water would be 100 degree saturated temperature. So, we need to reduce the temperature of the water at the inlet of the pump. So, and that would be 30 to 25 or 30 degree Celsius and at that temperature saturation pressure is much less than atmospheric pressure. Now, at 20 degrees at 25 degree Celsius P saturation is 3.16 kilo Pascal. So, you can understand that is significantly lesser than the atmospheric pressure. So, that means the entire condensation process will be conducted at a pressure which is way less than the atmospheric pressure. And in, if we need to perform this particular process, we need this particular component and that is the condenser. And if we do like this, then try to understand, say this is the pressure. So, now this is 1 prime. So, temperature of 1 prime you can understand that T 1 prime is less than T 1 and the corresponding saturation pressure also will be less and not only less this is substantially lesser than the atmospheric pressure. So, this is this would be good for the you know power plant because you can understand now this point should be 4 prime. So, you can understand that the specific work output will be more because H 4 prime is much less than H 4. So, we will be having high enthalpy drop that means, if we can design the system in such a way that the entire condensation process or entire this phase change process that steam will be converted into saturated liquid in a condition where pressure will be substantially less than the atmospheric pressure, we can understand that the specific work output will be more because enthalpy drop will be more. H 3 is fixed. So, H 3 is equal to constant for this case, right. So, now since the pressure is way less than the atmospheric pressure, we need to have a special device that will operate at this pressure and this is what is done in a condenser. So, we can understand condenser is not only you know condenser is having two different or two important objectives. First of all, it allows the entire unit to operate in a cyclic manner. It also allows to reduce the turbine exit pressure or back pressure of the turbine, so that the total enthalpy drop will be more, specific work output will be more and also the you know temperature of the uh, condensate at the exit of the condenser should be you know near about 25 to 30 degree Celsius temperature and then pump will not be having any problematic issues to handle that liquid. So, these two are the important objectives. So, if I write, so uh, 
the role of a condenser number one it is Number two is So, these two are the major you know objectives of the condenser. So, it allows to operate the entire unit in a cyclic manner, it also allows to reduce the turbine back pressure that is the exit pressure of the turbine and which in turn allows to have more specific work output. So, now if we look at the different types of turbine, so there are two broad classes of condenser. So, we have talked about condenser and there are two broad classes. The first type is direct type and second one is surface type. So, you can understand from the classification it is from the name of the first type that is direct type. So, what we can understand from this schematic depiction is that in the condenser steam will be condensed, steam will be condensed into the saturated liquid and that means the flowing stream will release heat and for that we need to have one cooling medium. So, that means in this particular unit if we try to draw the this unit again, so this is the condenser and in this condenser you know steam will. So, this is steam that comes out from the turbine. Exit and we will be getting at the exit of the condenser that is call condensate saturated liquid because we would like to use pump. So, this is the saturated liquid. Now, this process is basically a heat exchanging process. So, that means we need to circulate coolant and this is coolant in and this is coolant out. So, basically this is a condenser, so this is the condenser. Condenser is a type of heat exchanger in which two different streams you know exchange heat. Now, the st flowing stream can be allowed to mix with the coolant directly, if it is the case then it is a direct type condenser. If we allow coolant to flow through the tubes and steam will flow over the tubes, so the streams the, the two streams will not be allowed to mix directly that is the surface type condenser. So, as I had written here direct type that is 
two streams will be allowed to mix together and eventually at the exit of the condenser will be getting a single stream. It is designed accordingly, so that the amount of stream after mixing with the coolant will be produce the saturated liquid. Second thing which is surface type in which two streams are not allowed to mix together rather you know for the from the you know uh, convenience of maintenance and cleaning purpose, we need to flow coolant through the tubes while stream stream will flow over the tubes and in the process heat exchange will take place and steam will be converted into saturated liquid. So, this is called surface type. So, now uh, so I am writing here direct type that means two streams that is steam and coolant mix together and at the exit single stream comes out at the exit of the condenser of course. So, this is direct type. Now, let us discuss about one particular direct type condenser just for the sake of you know understanding how this particular type works. So, surface you know direct type is one uh, you know there are different you know uh, types available in the category of direct type. So, one particular type is spray condenser. So, if we try to draw the schematic then So, this is the condenser this is the pump and this is dry cooling tower. What is done? Let me tell you steam that comes out from the turbine, steam at the exit of the turbine is taken into this condenser, this is of direct type and what we can see that steam flows through the condenser and in the flowing steam this water is sprayed. So, this is water spray. So, water is sprayed into the flowing stream and as if these two streams are now mixing together eventually we will be collecting condensate. So, this is the condensate. Now, that condensate 
is again pumped back to the dry cooling tower and that you know water is again you know spread into the stream. Part of that condensate is pumped to the boiler as the feed water. It is very important. So, if we consider this is point 1, this is point 3 and this is point 4 and this is point 2. So, you can understand as I said you that the condensate after collecting in this you know basin that condensate will be pumped and a part of that condensate will be pumped back to the boiler as the feed water and the amount of that feed water will be equal to the amount of steam while remaining condensate will be pumped back to the dry cooling tower herein again that condensate will having relatively higher temperature and that condensate will release it to the air and that you know uh, after releasing it that condensate will be again spread into the flowing stream. So, this is a continuous process. So, if we try to have a simple you know mass and energy balance uh, energy balance analysis then we will come to know the amount of water that is needed to be supplied per kg of steam to get the saturated liquid at the you know inlet of the pump. So, if we write mass balance what we can write as I said you that you know mass flow rate of steam should be equal to mass flow rate of feed water. So, m dot 4 equal to m dot 2 and m dot 1 is essentially m dot 3 plus m dot 4. So, m dot 1 equal to m dot 3 plus m dot 4. So, this is the mass balance and if we write the energy balance. So, if we go for the energy balance then we can write what we can write enthalpy of the steam that is available at the inlet of the condenser plus enthalpy of the coolant that is available at the inlet of this condenser. So, the you know total enthalpy or total energy at and as if we are trying to have the energy balance you know energy balance across this condenser. So, we can write this m dot 4 h 4 that is the total energy available with the flowing stream m dot 3 plus m dot 3 into h 3. So, this is the energy available with the flowing stream this is the energy available with the flowing coolant equal to m dot 1 into h 1. So, that is the total energy which is available with the condensate that is collected in the basin. Now, m dot 1 if we go to the previous slide we can see that is m dot 3 plus m dot 4. So, this is m dot 3 plus m dot 4 into h 1. So, this is what we can write here. So, this is the uh, quantity. Now, we can now calculate m dot 3 divided by m dot 4 equal to h 1 minus h 4 divided by h 3 minus h 4 right. So, this is m dot 3 divided by m dot 4 h 1 minus h 4 divided by h 1 minus h 3. Now, if we we can uh, that is what we can write. So, that is we can write h 4 minus h 1 divided by h 4 minus h 3 h 4 minus uh, m dot 4 m dot 3 divided by m dot 4 equal to h 1 minus h 4 
h 1 minus h 4 divided by h 3 minus h 1. So, it should be h 1. So, this should be h 1. this should be h 1 right. Now, if we go back to the previous slide, we can understand that h 4 minus h 1 is much higher than h 3 minus h 1, because steam is having high enthalpy, then the enthalpy available would be coolant at the inlet of the condenser. So, that means, since that means, what we can see h 4 minus h 1 is greater than h 1 minus h 3 right. So, that is h 1 minus h 3 certainly enthalpy of the condenser will be higher than the enthalpy of the coolant which is available at the condenser in because uh, uh, that coolant will take away certain amount of heat from the flowing steam. So, we can understand that m dot 3 should be greater than m dot 4. So, that is what I was you know discussing few minutes back that this particular unit will be designed in such a way that the amount of coolant flow will dictate I mean uh, that the uh, condensate which would be available at the inlet of the pump should be saturated liquid. Now, coming to the surface type heat exchanger. surface type condenser as I said you that the condenser is a type of heat exchanger. So, it is a surface type heat exchanger. Now, if we try to recall surface type heat surface type condenser because of this name. So, we are not you know allowed to have or rather it is designed in such a way that two streams will not mix together two streams will be exchanging heat in a, you know uh, I mean while they are passing through the condenser without getting mixed. So, uh, if we now draw the schematic of this particular type So, what we can see from the schematic is that coolant is taken through the tubes basically I am writing coolant because coolant may be water it may be any oil in most of the cases coolant is water that coolant flows through the tubes and steam passes over the tubes and when coolant since the coolant is having low temperature, so the tube surface is having low temperature. When steam you know passes over the tubes, when steam is in contact with the cold surface, it condenses. 
and eventually we will be collecting condensate here right. So, you can understand this is a mechanical arrangement the tube which is shown at the top. So, coolant is allowed to flow from right to left or left to right that is depending on the design. So, coolant is so this is in this direction and this is the flow direction. So, you can understand this is called two pass surface type condenser as if the coolant which is entering into the tube at the top passes from right to the left again there is a bent tube and through this bent tube which is connecting the top and the bottom tubes that coolant again passes from left to the right and eventually it goes out. So, this is called two pass surface type condenser. Now, it is not mandatory that always condenser will be two pass condenser, but single pass condenser is also fine. In case of a single pass condenser, this tube will be having one inlet and one outlet. So, tubes are not connected by using this bent tube. So, there may be even two tubes for a single pass condenser, but coolant will flows a coolant will flow from the right to the left and it will goes out. Now, question is in this case we can understand that coolant when you know passes through the tube which is placed at the top when it is coming out from the uh, condenser again taken to the condenser through another tube and finally, it comes out and you know it is taken for further you know heat exchange uh, purpose. So, question is in this case we can understand that there are two boxes available. One box is placed at the right and this is called divider. So, this divider is given so that the coolant in and coolant out do not you know uh, I mean this when coolant is coming from the external source that coolant will be having low temperature. So, this coolant will not be allowed to mix with the coolant which is going out from the condenser and that is why this divider is given. And this left box is provided to accommodate this bent tube. You can understand there are several you know uh, this we need to hold the tubes inside the condenser. So, mechanical arrangements will be there and this is called steam dome. Now, this particular design is because we can understand that as if we are allowing steam to have more or less uniform distribution when it flows through the condenser. If we do not provide this particular uh, shaped part, then steam will be having almost non-uniform distribution and then the tube the part of the or you know tube which is uh, you know which is adjacent to the condenser side walls will not be in able will not be in a position to be in contact with the steam and heat exchange the performance or efficiency of the heat exchange or heat transfer will be reduced. So, this is a surface type heat exchanger and this is most widely used condenser in a power plant. So, direct type condensers are not widely used, but surface type condensers are most widely used in the power plant. Now, I would like to discuss one important point here that instead of two pass condenser, if we use single pass condenser, then uh, there will be an important benefit at the cost of some you know uh, one again uh, disadvantage that I would like to discuss. So, if we now write that is two pass that is what we can see vis a vis single pass. As I said you for the single pass coolant will come in and go out coolant will not be again directed into the condenser using this vent tube. So, two pass if we now consider. So, now if you are trying to compare the performance of two pass condenser vis a vis single pass condenser 
we need to have a we need to have a common basis. So, basically if we fix number and size of the tubes are same. So, this is 1 and flow velocity is also same. So, if we consider that number and size of the tubes will be same, velocity of coolant when passes through the tubes will be the same, then the amount of coolant needed for the single pass will be just double than the amount of coolant needed for the you know double uh, two pass. So, let me tell you once again, if we keep the number and size of the tubes are same, if we consider the velocity of coolant when passes through the tube is same for both cases, then the amount of coolant that will be required for the single pass will be will be double than that is required for two pass condenser. So, this is the this is the you know disadvantage, but the advantage is for a single pass rise in temperature will be in even half of the coolant than the two pass. If the rise in temperature of the coolant is even less, then we can reduce the turbine back pressure, we can reduce the condenser pressure and if we can reduce the condenser pressure further, if we look at the schematic defection uh, this T s diagram, then we can understand that the specific work output will be more. So, this is the difference between two pass and single pass condenser. So, this is the uh, if I now box it, then this is the disadvantage. Why this is disadvantage? Because if we need you know more coolant, then the pumping power will be more right. So, this is the disadvantage. Now, the advantage is for single pass rise in coolant temperature will be half than that the temperature so the rise in coolant temperature will be half so basically if the rise in coolant temperature is reduced we can again lower the back pressure right because saturation temperature try to understand again. So, essentially we will be getting saturated liquid. So, if the so if the rise in temperature is reduced that means, the saturation temperature will be reduced. So, we can go you know further or lower back pressure. If we reduce the back pressure or condenser pressure specific work out will be more, but let me tell you one important thing may be we can reduce the turbine back pressure or condenser pressure you know or we can lower the condenser pressure further and further to get specific work output, but we will be having another important you know uh, 
disadvantage that the point you know this particular point that is the uh, turbine exit you know that particular point is now going away from the saturated vapor line. That means, the steam quality at the exit of the turbine will be having high moisture content. So, it will be having you know again the problem will be of the problem will be there from the uh, perspective of turbine blade erosion. So, though we can increase the specific work output by lowering the condenser pressure if we use single pass condenser because temperature rise will be less, but the turbine exit the quality of steam at the turbine exit will be poorer and turbine blade erosion problem will be there. So, this is uh, the comparison between two pass and single pass condenser. Now, finally, I would like to discuss one important point that is you know if we uh, look at this particular type of condenser, what we can understand that uh, from today's discussion that condensers you know condensers play an important role from two different perspectives. First of all it allows to run the unit in a cyclic manner and also it allows to uh, operate the turbine at a low turbine back pressure that is the specific work out, output will be more. But the question is we can understand that if you would like to have coolant available at the inlet of the pump will be having temperature may be 25 or 30. So, the saturation pressure at that temperature already I have mentioned that it is way less than the atmospheric pressure. That means, the entire unit will run or operate at a pressure which is you know way less than the atmospheric pressure. So, though all these parts are you know connected through mechanical components. Since the unit is running at a you know pressure which is way less than the atmospheric pressure, air leakage problem will be there. So, air will leak into the condenser through different joints. Also, there is a possibility that when steam is coming out or steam comes out from the turbine that steam is having some amount of air which has already leaked into the steam through the turbine flange or flanges. So, when steam is having air already and also steam will uh, also air will leak into the condenser because condenser pressure is much much less than the atmospheric pressure that air will be having or will create two problematic issues. One is when steam is in contact with the cold surface of the tube steam will condense, but since air is non condensable that air will create a thin film around the uh, you know steam surface tube surface. So, it will reduce the heat transfer capacity. So, air is non condensable steam will try to condense, but since air is not condensable air will create a thin film over the tube surface and it will reduce the heat transfer capacity because air is having low you know thermal conductivity. Number 1, number 2 is so this is very important point and if by you know if air leaks into the condenser through different joints then the vacuum pressure will be reduced. So, the pressure at which condenser is operating will be reduced. So, that means, the turbine back pressure will be reduced and turbine work output will be reduced. So, if air leaks into the condenser and then the pressure inside the condenser will be again go up which in turn will you know allow or reduce the turbine back pressure and will reduce the enthalpy drop. So, turbine specific work output will be reduced. So, these two are the problematic issues because of the air leaking because of this air leakage into the condenser. So, air removal arrangements should be there 
not only air can leak into the condenser through the joints, but also some air will come with the steam stream itself because already air has leaked into the uh, steam at the turbine exit through turbine flanges. So, air removal part also should be there otherwise it will create the problematic issues that we have discussed today. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.